Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, we're going to be working on a particular SAM project on the Mac. So, one of my students tackled this the other day and said it was pretty tricky. Uh, I tried it myself yesterday, and it can be pretty tough, so I'm going to give it a shot this time, seeing if I can't get 100% on it. So, in particular, what we're talking about is our Assignment 3, Part 3. It's a SAM Word project. I'm going to go ahead and click on this to start it up and I'm going to start and you can see by my history I've already done this once got a 95 percent on it so not perfect but I'm pretty sure I know what I did wrong on the first go around so I'm gonna try it again here I'm gonna download the instructions file I'm gonna download the starting file and then using my browser here I'm just gonna go ahead and display those now I know what the first step of any of these uh, SAM projects are and that's going to be to rename this working file. I'm going to go ahead and right click rename and I'm going to change the little number one up there to a number two. So that part is an important step and that means I'll be able to kind of move right into the actual assignment. So let's see I'm going to go ahead and double click on the working file and launch that. There we go and I'm going to double click the instructions file pops it over there on the side that's pretty good I'm going to zoom out on the instructions just so they kind of all fit so here we go now we've seen this kind of activity before in SAM we have a working document and we have to go through the assignment directions and make the changes as specified I'm going to try to do this systematically and I'll certainly point out the the two things that I messed up on on my first go around yesterday when I was working on this. Let's see. So we're going right into it. Um, and I'm looking at step number one for the project. Development specialist at Northern Ur Oregon University. Hey, not too bad. We're in Oregon. You're creating an information sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On page one, rotate the picture of the foundation's logo to orient the text horizontally. Okay, just and I'll stop at that sentence. So I need to rotate this picture, and I can tell this little logo over here it is, it's twisted around. So I've noticed, especially on the Mac, you just have to be super slow and deliberate with finding some of these options. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that picture to make it active. I really don't need the format picture ribbon, but that's okay. And let's see. I think I saw this under arrange, and sure enough, there's a rotate option. I'm going to rotate it. 90 degrees to the right. There we go. Now that image is in a better position. Now the second or the last sentence in this step one here, after changing that rotation, change the position of the picture to top left with square text wrapping. This could be where I could see some students making a mistake because you might try to, well, it's already in the top left, so there's really nothing to do there. They might just change the wrapping. However, we want to try to be as specific as possible and use the built-in features of Word. So, picture is active, and let's see, I'm going to, I want to look for positioning. So I'm going to go back to this arrange. Ah, and there is a position option, and there are some specific choices. And let me mouse over this to get the screen tip. Position in top left with square text wrapping, and if I look over at the directions, position of the picture to top left with square text wrapping. So that's what they want me to click right there. Excellent. So I feel pretty good about step one. I'm going to move right into step number two. Step two gave me a moment of, of pause. You know, I really had to look at this one because it's tough to find the exact bullet they want, but I think I did that one. Actually, I know I did that one correct because I did the grading afterwards. So replace the text, insert bullet in the address. So they've got this little line up here, insert bullet. I'm going to go ahead and select that, and I'm just going to delete it. So my insertion point is right there in between the zip code. Um, and that phone number, I was just sorry, just distracted by the zip code there. Um, it's almost like our zip code. So let's see, I want to put that bullet right in there. So I'm going to head over to the insert ribbon and over on the far right I'm going to do advanced symbol. Now I have to tell you the first time I was doing this I was kind of hunting around and in fact is it where I want it to be? No not quite. 
So basically what I'm looking at is I'm under this normal text setting here and if I click on some of these you'll notice I'll get these little comments in here insert Garamond character 163 and here we go so I'll click back on this one Garamond character 183 it's not much to look at and I tried different fonts but at the normal text under symbols I clicked around and said oh okay there's 183 and it is like a little bullet and they mentioned that that's what they want right in here is filled bullet symbol 183 so I'm just gonna click insert and then close there's a tiny little bullet up there now that's all it takes now on my assignment directions I'm gonna go ahead and strike through strike out uh, steps one and two so that we have that visual confirmation we've done those I'm moving on to project step three at a dotted bottom border to the address line paragraph um, one of my better students who was working on this a little bit early yeah I think she had, she had sent me her document and I think she may have done a dashed border not a dotted border so let's make sure we get the right border here a dotted bottom border to the address line paragraph so let's see back over here I don't need that I'm gonna go ahead and select that address line paragraph I'm selecting the paragraph including the invisible paragraph symbol right there on the home ribbon there's an option over here for borders and shading. So notice I'm getting the little border button. I'm going to go all the way down to borders and shading. That's going to give me some good custom controls on the borders. Now the dotted bottom border I think is going to be this second one. Let's see if I mouse over. Do I get little screen tips? Uh, it doesn't look like I get a little screen tip at all. That's a bummer. But I'm pretty sure that second one is dotted not to be confused with the third one which is dashed okay so I've got the dotted border the color of the border should be green accent one now unfortunately I'm not getting my little screen tips here however from previous Microsoft Word use I know that these top colors for the theme colors those are the accent ones so and that's the only green one obviously there's a little tealish color which is like a greenish blue but I'm gonna go for this one and then it says change the width to one and a half points so I'm gonna change it to one and a half point width now I wanna apply this green border to just the bottom so I'm looking over here in the preview area and I'm gonna turn off the top turn off the left turn off the right so that there's only a bottom border I can turn that one off and back on so just in the little preview I know it's tough to see that preview but now I'm gonna click OK and I see that I've got this dotted border alright I think that's all I need to do for step three step number four on page two ooh, we're already down on page two okay there's page two use the format painter to apply the formatting from the text make a gift so they've got this text up here that's green and bold I'm gonna use the format painter on the home ribbon and I'm supposed to apply this to the text the Northern Oregon University Foundation so right here okay so I know that that text is now formatted the same as the previous text um, cool well that takes care of steps three and four those are pretty easy nothing too wrong with that and let's see I'm gonna strike out those okay number five apply the brightness 20% plus oh, hold on plus 20 percent contrast plus 20 percent to correct the picture of the students okay so I'm gonna double click on the picture of the students I'm gonna turn off that format picture dialog box the picture is active I can see the sizing handles I'm gonna go to the corrections drop down and I'm gonna mouse over this I think it's this one no I'm close though notice it says in the screen tip bright plus 20 contrast 0 I'm gonna go down one bright plus 20 contrast plus 20 don't confuse that with up here they've got a brightness plus 20 contrast negative 20 so we make sure to get make sure to get the right one there plus 20 contrast plus 20 click that yeah I guess it changed um, resize the picture to a width of 5 inches so I see that my proportional um, orientation lock is on I'm going to change that size to 5, enter, 
that reduces the height as well and then add the following alt text ah uh, one of my students was asking about that alt text description well as it happens I've got a lot of experience with putting alt text in images not just in word documents but in web pages and stuff so this one I was pretty easy for me but I bet it's very unusual for most people that use Microsoft Word even people that use Microsoft Word regularly so I can right click on this picture and one of the options is edit alt text so if somebody was using your document that had a vision impairment and they had a special reader the alt text would be read to them using an aural uh, reader or a braille reader or something like that now in this little text box I need to type carefully I've got my little grammarly thing there is that gonna mess things up if I move it oh, there we go so I need to type carefully if you mistype something it'll count it as wrong so the bold text and I do have a tip for you on this one group of five students walking on campus period include the period because the period is part of the bold in the instructions they want you to type that let me just look at that again group of five students walking on campus and I typed group of five students walking on campus excellent once I've got that and by the way don't press enter because that'll take me to a new line it'll probably count that as wrong so let me go back and delete that and I'm gonna close my alt text I feel good about that step number six clear the formatting from the paragraph thank you for considering men and women's athletics ah here it is down here so I've got this paragraph and I'm gonna select it don't select giving opportunities because they want you to get just this one paragraph giving opportunities in is, is in a previous paragraph and then on the home ribbon there's a little button right here it's the A with a little eraser I'm pretty sure I've got a quiz question on this coming up I'm gonna click that to get rid of the formatting that takes care of steps five and six I'm gonna strike those out number seven add the linear Venn smart art in the blank paragraph now I know what a Venn diagram is it's those diagrams of the circles and they overlap but I have to tell you I had to hunt around for a minute to find it and then of course it occurred to me if you scroll down in the directions and look at the finished example you'll get a visual aid of what we're looking for so we're looking for the uh, four circles four discs kind of overlapping each other that's what I want to find okay now that we know what we're looking for the linear Venn smart art in the blank paragraph after the in the previous fiscal year so if I click right down here my insertion point goes right into that space because there's an empty paragraph there and let's see I'm gonna head over to the insert ribbon my little Grammarly button is annoying me again so I'm gonna move that out of the way and uh, let's see what am I doing I'm looking for smart art okay I think it's this one I'm gonna hover over that insert smart art graphic okay now there's nothing that says Venn diagram and I can't remember is it relationship Ah, I think it is so if I go to the relationship category and this is what I did yet you know I was like geez or do they want I didn't know if they wanted process or higher you know relationship I think I went there like second and if I move down here I see there is a linear Venn diagram that's what they want okay click okay got that part in and done 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 okay working from left to right enter the following text in each shape again spelling is critical there's a lot of typing in this particular uh, SAM project so misspellings will be counted wrong so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this first one where it says actually I can work right up here this is what I did yesterday too so I can click on this first one and type in businesses make sure I spell it properly I'll go to the next one oops I gotta make sure I do capital A for alumni alumni third one friends and the last one is gonna be foundations quick glance to make sure I spelled things properly businesses alumni friends foundations good now I'm gonna close this little smart art text box we don't need it but it is possible to get that back by the way and on the Mac how would I do that there's probably a button up here somewhere text pane that's it right there 
So if I were to click on that, it would bring that little text box back. Okay, now I will tell you this. Step number eight. I missed a step yesterday when I was working on this. And, um, oh, or was it? Or no, I, I think I did this step, but I, I didn't choose the right thing or something. They want transparent gradient range. I must have picked the wrong item. So I got some points deducted for that. And then later on, there's a table here where I totally skipped a step and, uh, or a sub step, let's say. So I need to make sure I go careful over step eight. Resize the smart art to a height of 2.3 inches. So I'm just gonna click on the border of the smart art. When you click on the border of an object in Word or PowerPoint, it has the same basic effect as selecting the entire thing. So that's good. If I had something individually selected, there's a risk that I could be formatting that individual item and not the overall smart art. So I'm gonna click on that border again. And let's see, in fact, I'm gonna double click on the border. That'll make sure I've got, oh, I've got my smart art design. That looks pretty good. Let's see, where is my sizing control? Ah, I think it's hidden under here. Let me click on this and then format. That's what I want. I need that format, there it is. Now, what do they want? They want a height of 2.3 inches. So I'm gonna go to the height and type in 2.3. Ooh, I don't have my aspect ratio locked. I wonder if that's gonna hurt me. Well, we'll find out. I'm gonna click. That's a good sign. And if I scroll up, I can see that it now fits up there. Let me go ahead and close this format shape pane. Great, okay, I think that's the way it's supposed to look. Still on step number eight. Change the colors to transparent gradient range accent one. Okay, again, I'm gonna click on the border and then let's see, colors, is this what they want? I don't think so. That's the font, that's for font color. Let's make sure, let's go back to Smart Art Design for a moment. Let me go here, and now I'm on Change Colors. Now I can tell my Smart Art is still active. Change Colors, now this is where I think I maybe screwed up a little bit. Transparent Gradient Range, Accent 1. Well, there's Accent 1, let me mouse over. Nope, not that one, not that. This is the one I picked, but I don't think that's the one I should have picked. Gradient Loop, ah, that's what I should have done. So, yesterday when I was doing this, I saw this one, Gradient Range, and I just kind of got a little bit confused by that word transparent. Um, so I figured that must have been it. But if I went a little bit further, there is a transparent gradient range. Let me click on that one. Doesn't really look too much different than the other one, but anyway, that looks pretty good. I feel much better about this one now. And then change the smart art style to intense effect. Everything is still selected. Let's see, let me click on this lower part here. White outline, subtle effect moderate effect, intense effect. Click that one. Okay, that takes care of steps seven and eight. I feel much better about this one now that I've saw that, yeah, I just needed to hunt around a little bit longer for that gradient, transparent gradient range. Okay, step number nine, we're almost done. On page three, ooh, page three. Set a right align tab stop with a dotted leader at five and a quarter inches for the paragraph. We were just practicing this in class the other day. Well, not exactly this. We were practice, practicing tabs using the ruler. Now, yesterday my ruler wasn't displayed, so I had to go to the view ribbon and I turned the ruler on so that I could see it. And then the tab selector is over here on the far left of the ruler. Now the tab selector is in the same location on the PC versus the Mac, but I have to tell you the tab symbols look quite a bit different on the Mac than they do on the PC. So in class we were really looking at this and practicing it, but of course we were using PCs over in the computer lab. So definitely this is new to me. So I, you know, I had to click through these and I think this is the default. I think that's the left tab. And if I mouse over, unfortunately, it doesn't confirm that for me. Now, if I click once, I get this one. I'm pretty sure that's a center tab. Uh, it could be a decimal tab. You're right, that's not it. Let me go back. 
That, I think, is a left align tab. And then I click, and then it's the up arrow. That's a center tab. And now if it's got the little arrow pointing to the left, that's the right align tab. Now they want this tab at the five and a quarter inch mark. So I just looked at the ruler. I put the tip of my arrow at the five and a quarter inch mark. Obviously there's a five and a half, five and a quarter, and I click once right there. That puts the right align tab. However, they want a leader style on it. Now in on the PC, we can go to the home ribbon and open up a paragraph command group and get to the tabs. And I looked around a little bit for that yesterday and I didn't find it, but I didn't look for long because there's another way we can get to the tabs dialog box. Once there's a custom tab on the ruler, you can double click one, two, and that's going to open up the tabs dialog box. There's my five and a quarter uh, right aligned tab. I can click there, I can see that it's right aligned or change it if I needed to, and I can choose a leader style. Did they tell me which one to get? Um, the dotted one, not the dashed, okay. And then I just click okay, and that automatically puts in, ooh, that did not do what I thought. You know what it did? But crap, was I in the wrong spot? It should have done it up here and down here, I think. I may not have been clicked on the right spot. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to Command Z on my document and basically undo. So if I go back to these, to this paragraph, oh, you know, that must have already been there. I don't think I'd activated the paragraph. So I jumped the gun a little bit. So let me do this again. On page three, set a right align tab stop, dotted leader, five and a quarter. Okay. For the paragraph gift donations or gift designations. Yeah. Doesn't matter where my insertion point is, by the way. So I'm going to do this again. I still have the right align tab. I'm going to click once on the five and a quarter on the ruler to set the tab. And we can see the 2020 just jumped over there. Now I'm going to double click on the tab symbol. Oops, I made a mistake, but that's okay. I can fix it here. So I clicked a little bit too far to the right. So I'm going to click on the 5.31 and I'm going to, I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to click the little minus to clear it. I'm going to go back to the five and a quarter, right align, leader dotted. That's leader style number two on the PC. And I'm going to click OK. There we go. That's what it should look like. All right. That's step number nine. Strike it out. I got to keep an eye on the clock because I have to go pick up my wife pretty soon. Insert a row at the end of the gift designations table containing the data shown. Okay, I'm going to insert a new row on this table. Here's how I did it. I just went to the last cell, pressed my tab key, and that put in a new row. And containing the data here, I'm going to type in facilities and 15%. Here's something I skipped. So after I typed in that text, I just moved on to step 11 yesterday. I totally forgot this. Apply the list, uh, list table three accent five table style. So I'm going to select this table by clicking the little selection handle in the top left corner of the table. And then I'm going to go to table design. I'm going to click on this drop down for the various uh, designs. And what do they want? List table three accent five. I don't know what one that one is. Ah, list tables. There's a category called list tables. I'm going to go to the greens. They've been using lots of greens, right? List table one, list table two, list table three, accent five, accent two, three, four. Okay, it's the orange one there. List table three, accent five. There we go. Now it looks like the other table on there. That takes care of step 10. I definitely feel better like I got that one taken care of. Step 11. Flip the donate picture in the Your Gift Changes Lives. Okay, so there's a picture over here and it's uh, mirrored. It's inverted, I mean. I'm going to double click on that picture. I'm going to go to Arrange and then I'm going to go to Align. Nope, I'm not going to go to a line. Where am I going to go? I'm going to go to 
rotate. Ah, there it is. And I'm going to flip it horizontally. Cool, that looks better. All right, so I flipped the picture, changed the text wrapping to square. Picture is still active. I'm going to go to, isn't text wrapping on here somewhere? Let's go to a range again. Text wrapping, there it is. And what do I need to get? The square, square wrapping. That looks good. Recolor the picture to green accent color one light. Okay, so I should be able to recolor this picture. There's some green ones down here. Green accent color one dark. Green, oh, no, it's going the wrong way. What's this one? Ah, green accent color one light. Click, alrighty. Step number 12, change the shape style of the President's Club shape. There it is right there. To moderate effect gold accent six. Alrighty. So I'm gonna double click to activate it, shape format. And then here's all the styles. Moderate effect gold accent six. All right, I'm just gonna go to one. Oh, I was pretty close. Maybe this one, moderate effect gold accent, moderate effect gold accent six. Click. Apply the shadow offset. Yeah, I kind of guessed at this one, but I guessed right yesterday when I did this. There's a shadow option in here. Shadow. And then it doesn't say anything about outer, but um, I think this one, this is offset bottom. We want offset center. There it is, offset center shape effect from the shape. So I think that's the one I picked. And click that. That's step number 12. Step number 13, use the format painter to apply the formatting of the scholarships shape. So I click once on the scholarship shape. It's tough to say. Go to the home ribbon, go to the format painter, and then I click on the fellowships shape. So those two match up. Your document should look like the final figure on the following pages. Okay, there's the top part. That, here, let me close this. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, there's the other page with the photo of the kids, the students, I mean. Got the Venn diagram, got the tables and the leader tabs. Excellent, I feel good about this. I'm gonna click the floppy disk button to save. I'm gonna jump back over to my browser. I'm going to, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna to click to browse. I'm in my downloads. I'm gonna to go to my working document right here. Double click it. It's thinking, I think it's uploaded. January 17th, that is today. Cool, 3.28 p.m., we're good. And I'm gonna submit my second attempt for grading. Last time I got a 95%. I'm gonna to go to graded summary report. Open my downloads folder, open the report, 100 out of 100, excellent, that's what I wanna see. Cool, so yeah, so I didn't do, uh, didn't do perfect last time, so I did go back and I looked at, this, at the report and I reread the directions and I had a really good idea of what I did wrong, so always makes it easier to do that second time around, so excellent. Well. Thank you very much for hanging out with me, and I hope this was informative, and definitely be patient with yourself as you're reading through those directions on SAM projects and looking for the skills, especially if you're like me and you're really new to the Mac interface. It can be tough sometimes exploring and finding out where those options are. Uh, we will be using more SAM projects in PowerPoint and in Excel, and be prepared to hunt around. So again, thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.